is something that happened at school to you that even now you are still mad about? As someone who attended an international private school in the United Arab Emirates up until the age of nine, I have a novel's worth of horror stories. Nothing is worse than the last day of grade two. It was the last day and we were all sitting in class. We were having a good time. We were like on the carpet. I think we were telling stories or having a book read to us to like celebrate the last day. Mind you, this was a school where we had end of term exams starting from senior kindergarten. So this was considered fun. There were no pizza parties or anything like that. Miss Stabler gives me a warning while we're in our group because I'm talking too much. Now, I do have a problem where I don't shut the fuck up, and this has been a consistent issue in my life. I am now medicated for my ADHD, and it helps, but I think it's just inherent. I don't even know if it's diagnosis-related. And she gives me a warning, and then time goes on, we're on the carpet. I'm talking about something excitedly, I'm seven years old, chatting with my friends. Miss Stabler says, Taha, get up. Everyone's staring at me, all the chatter stops. Whatever end of year good vibes existed in that room have now been demolished by that rancid monster, Miss Stabler. She says, you're going to go to Miss John's class and you're going to go sit in the corner. I said, what? I'm not in Miss John's class. Miss Stabler doesn't care. She takes me to Miss John's class, whispers something to Miss John, and Miss John seats me in the corner of her class. While the rest of her class is enjoying the last day of school, they're like whispering to each other and looking at me like, what's happening? It's the last day. Like, why is this kid in trouble? And as they're doing their like fun arts and crafts for the end of the year, Miss Jean goes, look class, points at me. That's what happens when you misbehave. And everyone's just staring at me. And all I did was talk as a seven-year-old on the last day of school. The story was really funny to me when I started it, but I'm realizing that it's upsetting because that shit has implications. Hmm. Don't even get me started. So basically, as a Wayne, I spoke Irish. I went to an Irish preschool and then an Irish primary school. But because my parents hadn't decided whether or not I was gonna continue all of my education in Irish, I was attending after school school. Wild fun, loved it, after school school. But basically that was my English learning time. Um, so I did private tuition one-to-one -one growing up so that I didn't fall behind just in case my parents wanted me to switch. So basically the fateful day came where my parents were like, do you know what, we can't help you with your homework anymore because guess what, they didn't speak Irish. Uh, so <laughs> they moved me. Now, when I turn up to class, nothing was tested. Nobody decided to sit me down and do a quick test as to where my English abilities were or my mathematics or anything at all. Not one thing. So your girl was put on special learners. Hell yeah. So was I special learning? No. Did they figure that out? No. So basically the school gaslit me into thinking that I had learning issues and I actually didn't have any because my mum eventually moved me to a different school. Didn't tell them that I was like two years behind and I just dove head first into regular schoolwork and didn't say anything and managed to kind of pass and, and then go on to be fine. But I'm ripping the fact that nobody sat me down to do a test to see if I was actually a special learner. Nah, must be. Sure, look at her. I will never forget this, but for context, I went to a very small school system. My graduating class was like 174, I think. But in middle school, we had our own designated health teacher that taught a health class. So when we got to high school, I thought it was going to be the same. But no, it was just our gym teachers teaching health class once a month or once every six to eight weeks. And so our two health teachers were one cis male, one cis female in their 30s. And I believe this particular incident was after our um, sex ed course. And we are talking about assault on women specifically. And we are talking about what happens after you get assaulted, what you should do, who you should call, what your resources are, all these kinds of options that were pretty helpful. And at one point, my male teacher, who is the coach of the football team, asks something along the lines of, stand up if you think that it's still okay to have sex with a woman if she consented at first, but withdrew that consent later. He didn't phrase it so clearly, but nobody stood up except for this one guy who was on the football team. And of course, everyone's looking around like, oh my god, like, what the heck? And he asks the student, he's like, well, explain your reasoning. And so the student did, and the teacher didn't really say anything, and then he sat down, and then we continued the lesson. So, I mean, he didn't really say, oh, you shouldn't do that or anything. Like, 
that was it. But after class, I remember talking to my friend. I wonder if she remembers this, but um, we were saying like, I don't really think that's right. Like we should say something to them about talking about how not to, you know, assault somebody, how people should understand consent better. And so we approached our two teachers in the hallway after. I was very shy at the time, so I don't think I was the one that said the initial comment, but she said something like, I think we should talk more about consent and how not to assault somebody instead of just what to do after. And without hesitation, our teacher both looked at each other very quickly and then looked back at us and said, well, if you find something, maybe we'll put it into the curriculum. We were 15 or 16 at the time. We had no teaching experience and that was the response. And for some more context, my sister just graduated the same high school like six years later and they did not change anything in their curriculum and just the fact that they said that to two 15, 16 year olds at the time um, without any like motivation to change it really highlights the rape culture in our country and it also just highlights the need for more sex positive talk and I just won't forget it. Okay, 8th grade English class, we are reading Night by Ellie Wiesel, great book about the Holocaust. Um, but before we started reading, we were asked to decorate these paper stars of David and write our names on it, which, that's already questionable, you know, um, decorating something of significance to a culture and religion which most of us didn't belong to. But as we read the book, the teacher almost made a game out of this book about a tragedy where whenever someone, a real person in this non-fiction book, would die from the Holocaust, they would draw one of our names and be like, oh no, you died, you were sent to the concentration camp, and we would have to put this Star of David <laughs> with our names on it onto like a poster board with a drawing of the concentration camp on it, but like, these are real people, and um, whenever someone in my class who was Jewish mentioned like, hey, this is really wrong, I'm feeling uncomfortable, he was taken into the hallway and he was yelled at, and I've talked to two people who um, have been at that middle school like 10, 15 years before I went, and nope, that lesson has always been taught by the same, the same teacher for as long as she's been there, and the administration knows about it. They've gotten complaints, but um, they, they legitimately made it seem like a game show, and she made a big deal of like, oh, it's time for someone else to go on the board. What? <laughs> Okay, so technically the story happened in college, but college is still school, and this still makes me mad, so I'm gonna tell the story. Anyway, I was like a sophomore in college, and I had this uh, a huge crush on this guy. Um, I was super obsessed with him now, bleh, but at the time, I was super obsessed with him, and we had, like, we started getting a little spicy. So me and him started doing spicy things with each other, uh, um, and... He would text me and tell me how beautiful he thought I was and he would ask for pictures of myself, spicy pictures of me, and he would always just tell me, I don't know why you're why you're so insecure, you're beautiful, ugh, cause you know, I'm a big girl, so I always like was insecure about that. But one day I was hanging out with one of his friends, we'll call him Jeff, but anyway, Jeff and I were kind of cool with each other, so we were just hanging out. Anyway, Jeff whips out his phone and I see that he has a message from the guy that I was talking to. And so Jeff takes a snap of us hanging out together and sends it to the guy that I'm talking to. A couple minutes pass or whatever and Jeff uh, left his phone open, unlocked, and so I opened the message because I, I just wanted to see what he said. And, and I quote, he said, what you hanging out with her fat ass for? Now mind you, we had just had spicy time the night before. And this is a guy that like I've been talking to who is now talking shit about me <laughs> to his friend because he doesn't know that I'm seeing these messages. He didn't send these messages to me. He was sending these messages to Jeff who was also sort of kind of my friend at the time. So yeah, if you don't believe big girls when we say that we are a fetish to, to, to men and that these men will lie to us and tell us that we're beautiful and that they think we're amazing, but then outwardly to friends, family, and behind our backs still make fun of us and chastise us for our weight and our size, they will. So still angry about it because I fell for it. Ugh. But anyway, if you're watching this right now, fuck you, lame ass nigga. 
Oh, I've been waiting for this and like. So I'm in primary school, right? And I'm not doing very well. I'm not like other children, all right? So they test me for dyslexia and it comes back that I am lazy. That was what they told my mom and dad. Here's me, actually dyslexic, right? I got tested later on in life and oh yeah, they were wrong. So because I couldn't spell, what the fuck? They sent me to this wee teacher and she was like, help me spell. She was not in the right job because I spelled fire wrong. I can remember the word. I can remember it. It's engraved in my brain. So there's me, spelled it wrong. And she, what did she do? Nah, she didn't tell me how to correctly write it. She threw a pen at my face. Fallon felt that pen right between the eyes. I swear, I didn't know what to do. Like, who does that to win? Like, lost the rag at me and threw a pen at me. <laughs> I'm not a dark board, my dear. Pen goes on the paper.